AI text to video has taken a massive leap forward, not only in terms of quality, but also it's completely free for now at least, and it's easy to use. This is the most excited I've been about a new AI tool in a long time. By a long time, I mean a couple months, but that's years in AI time. So I'm talking about Pika Labs. It's only been a couple weeks since they launched and there have already been some incredible results. And it's not just text to video, they also released image to video, which has been a complete game changer. Whether that's just to quickly animate a mid-journey image or to guide and create an entire film. So I wanna show you how it works, generate in a few different styles and show up. I've learned so far and also showcase the best creations I've seen. Now there's some other good text to video that's come out before this. The biggest player has been Runway ML. You can definitely get some good stuff. Here's one of the best creations I've seen by Nick St. Pierre. This, my friend, is life in its purest form. A dance of eons, untamed and free, yet perfectly choreographed. One of the main issues with Runway is cost. You get a set amount of credits each month that you can burn through extremely quick. It gets very expensive very fast. To get something like this, you'd need to spend a good chunk of change. But it's not just that, Pika also has the best movement out of any model yet. With Runway, you typically get simple camera movement and not that much movement from your subject. But Pika has realistic movement for a wide variety of scenes and subjects, or multiple characters, or multiple types of movement, like camera movement while your subject is moving and keeping it all relatively coherent. Like this looks like just a real natural walking stride. And same with running, this looks great. Of course, it's not perfect, but it's a big step forward there. And also the ability to prompt with images is huge. The other best text to video that came out recently was Zero Scope, which is amazing. But the biggest difference again is that Pika has image prompting. Zero Scope is nice that it's completely open source. We don't know what Pika Labs was trained on or how it works. And you can use Zero Scope for free as well, but if it's busy, it takes a long time or it sometimes doesn't work at all. If you have the right hardware, you can duplicate the space and run it yourself for a few dollars an hour. Then it takes about a minute to generate each video. That's the average generation time with Pika for free. I don't know how long it will be free. I'm sure they'll move to some sort of paid model eventually, but for now, I'm loving it. And there's other awesome tools like Kyber, Neural Frames, Warp Fusion, Deform, and a bunch of others. But those all have a very particular look with that kind of flickery decoherence, which I like in a lot of cases and will still be using those tools, but Pika is able to get a lot smoother. I want to showcase some of my favorites here. The Door Brothers have been consistently creating just incredible stuff. So we'll start with this one because you may remember a bunch of AI generated food commercials people were posting from other text to video tools a little while back. People were posting them because of how weird they turned out. So when you compare this quality with those from a couple months ago, it's pretty mind blowing. Here's another one from the Door Brothers that's in a Van Gogh style that looks really cool. Um, it's a long one, so I just spliced out a few parts. Can you see? I recommend you go watch the full thing. Honestly, I could just show everything they've been posting. It was really hard to narrow it down. They've been killing it. But I'll let you go follow them to check it all out. Now let's go to the opposite end with this more horror themed one by Winter Garden AI. It's reimagining HR Geiger works. I'm assuming he used some of Geiger's art as image prompts, or maybe he just asked it to generate in the style of HR Geiger for some, but with the music and editing, this one is awesome. This is just a short clip. The full thing is two minutes long. Then here's a documentary on ants by Imposter Chick. You socially take. There are very few creatures, problems or obstacles. The ants look amazing, and they end up building more and more complex technology throughout the video. Oh, this one's great. On YouTube, the channel is Creativity Risk. She has another one on sea turtles. And this New York flood by Dave Rainin is really well done with the story and the music. Leaning into the rain was a really good idea, so the inconsistencies you get are a lot less noticeable. That's a good move with all AI video right now, leaning into scenes that naturally have a little more distortion or are more surreal or abstract. Those end up just feeling better because your brain kind of expects them to be a little bit off anyways. Harry, 
Here's a short one by Mr. Alan T that I assume a lot of time was put into. Um, he says the process was mid journey, generative fill, then Pika, and then some compiling and editing added on top. My guess is he started with a close up of the face, then used zoom out in mid journey to zoom out to different scenes and then animated it with Pika. But it just goes to show what you can do if you get creative with all the new tools available. I could just keep going and going. I had a lot of fun going through all these. So I'll finish up the showcase with just a bunch of clips I put together from a lot of different people just to show off the range of what it can do. So these first ones are all by Scotty Wick. His Twitter is full of awesome examples like animating memes, all the Star Wars characters as babies. And he did a full cyberpunk Futurama trailer. That's amazing. Again, I cut a bunch of those clips short. His and everyone's Twitters that I show will be linked down in the description. More from the Door Brothers. Seriously, so much good stuff on their Twitter. I'll let more of these play to some music. You can skip to the next section if you want to jump into the platform. But personally, I love watching these. someone had to make a video of Elon and Zuck. Here's them dancing. This is one of the hardest things for AI to get right, but this is significant progress. Midjourney had their one year anniversary recently, and a lot of people were posting the progress over that year. The amount it's improved from looking like this to now being able to generate images that are indistinguishable from real photos. I mean, all in just one year, imagine where this will be in a year. Of course, video has its own unique challenges, but there's a ton of research to build off now. So let's jump into it. Just like Midjourney, this is all operated within Discord right now. It's a closed beta, but you can go to pika.art and fill out a type form to get access. They've been letting people in pretty quickly within a couple days. They'll send you a link to join the Discord. Then once you're in, it's set up similar to Midjourney. You can generate in these rooms. They have daily contests with different themes, helpful chats for discussions and support. Really, everyone is still just experimenting and figuring things out right now and sharing with each other what works. They have a getting started channel with the basic instructions, which are all pretty simple. So I'll just jump in and show you how it works. Use the create command, just forward slash create, then enter your prompt. And the main parameter to use is aspect ratio. You only use one dash instead of two like Midjourney. So dash AR 16.9 then let it generate. The other parameters are guidance scale for how related the image will be to the text, neg for negative prompting, seed for more consistent generations, and motion for how likely you are to get motion. They're all in this getting started channel for reference. And just like that, our video is done. And you can just click this button to rerun the generation to get some different results. I'll usually test out prompts one at a time to make sure the prompt is good. Then I'll have it generate a few more and pick the best one. But just from a super simple prompt and some music from Google LM, we get this. I'll do a couple more examples here before we jump into image prompts. It gets a little chaotic in here and hard to keep track of. So what I've been doing is come up to the top right and then click create thread. Then click these three dots up here and select open in full view. Then you'll essentially have your own little room to generate in. Let's make a quick wildlife documentary. So I asked ChatGPT to write me a script about the diversity of wildlife and ecosystems around the world to be narrated by David Attenborough. Had a little bit of back and forth to get it short and concise, then generated the voiceover in 11 labs and created some scenes to go along with it. I used simple prompts for the whole thing, sometimes as simple as just jellyfish swimming or tiger stalking in a jungle. For the landscape shots, I used aerial shot and time lapse. Nothing complicated at all, but I did generate each of them quite a few times, then picked the best ones. Then added some music and synced it up a little bit. I went through it pretty quickly, but here's the result. Our planet, a kaleidoscope of ecosystems, demonstrates life's incredible adaptability. The Arctic is a vast canvas of serene white, 
a testament to life's resilience amidst extremes. The African savannas, with their endless golden tapestry, reflect the grand scale of existence. Amidst the emerald chaos of rainforests, life thrives in every inch of this vibrant labyrinth. The oceans, those endless blues, house an intricate aquatic metropolis pulsating with life. From the polar ice to the tropics, from the ocean depths to the highest peaks, our world embodies the profound diversity of life in its endless forms. I think text prompts are really fun because you never know what's going to happen. But if you have a vision you want to stick to and something specific in mind, image prompts are the way to go. So with image prompting, your first frame will look very similar to your reference image. Making generations in mid-journey and using those as your prompt is a great way to get consistent aesthetics or just to get your scene closer to the way you want it since you have so much control in mid-journey. So you just type your prompt. Um, what I've found gets the best results is to prompt with what you want to be moving in your scene. Then click the plus one to add your image or you can hit tab three times. Then upload the image and submit. And this looks awesome. So with image prompting, you get all the limitless styles and scenes you have available in Midjourney, and then some control over the animation within your scene. It usually takes a few generations to get it to do what you want, but I've been getting some great results. And all this has been way easier to pick up than any other text to video I've tried. The generations are only three seconds right now. They announced that they'll be moving that up to five seconds soon. And the quality isn't too high yet. A lot of people have been using Zero Scope to upscale their videos, or you could use something like Topaz AI to upscale. There's some cheaper alternatives out there too, like HitPaw, or I know there's free ones. I haven't tested very many out, but Zero Scope is a great way to go. I've just started my experimenting. I'll be doing much deeper dives into different techniques and ways to control the results. I'll be posting some of that on Twitter. I may make another video with a more in-depth tutorial if it seems like people want it, but really I'm just excited to keep exploring and creating with this.